What's up, guys? We have a brand new set, a brand new Sanctum, events coming up, all sorts of stuff. Let's dive in and check out the new Sanctum, and then I'll show you some new cards from the new set, Tides of Fate. All right, so here we have the new Sanctum. Some cards are still the same, some are new, some have changed prices, so let's get into it. We've got the Answers deck, first of all, which now has a Gleam Weaver, which is great against opponents who are playing Anubians or pulling things from their void. It's a Mystic, which is probably not very pertinent, but we will see other tribes are going to be very important. Nightleaf Trapper was always there, but it used to be 13. It's now reduced to 12. This is a phenomenal card. It's one of the only two Relic Removers in the Sanctum, and uh, it's now reduced down to 12, so that's pretty great if you're looking for some Relic Removal. Valka's Discovery still in there, still 17. Svart Basilisk is a 4-mana 4-4. Four, four. Remove Sleep and 2 Durability from your opponent's Relic. For 4-mana for a 4-4, four, four, you get tons of upside. It's 18. Favor seems like a pretty great deal. Looking forward to this one being in there. It's a Wild as well, which might help some Nature decks. Then we have the Defenders deck, where we can see we've got two Olympians. And an Atlantean, which the new set is going to be very heavy on Atlanteans and Dragons as the event uh, is going to show us. So here we've got an actual couple frontliners here in the Defenders deck now. Uh, these are all new except for the Rune of Life, which still costs 15. The Combat Medic is interesting. It doesn't have frontline, but it heals your god for 2. 3 mana, 3-3 three, three for 12 favor. Seems pretty cheap and good. Uh, the frontliner here that's Atlantean is 5 mana, 5-4, five, which is definitely not great. But again, it's an Atlantean, so it might have some really good synergies. Next up, we've got Removal. So now we have almost, or maybe entirely, all new cards, although I think these have all been in some iteration of the Sanctum over the years. They haven't been in there recently. Uh, Onyx Nightblade was in there, and I think it caused problems because it really invalidates a lot of one-strength cards. Um, especially at the time, I think Archimedes Mirror was very popular in the meta, and this just basically is a two mana, and it destroys your opponent's six mana creature. So I'm not a huge fan of Onyx Nightblade being in here. This is the one card I don't really like seeing in here. It is what it is. It's pretty cheap, good removal. And you can see we got the tic-tac-toe here of Guild, Guild, Guild. Guild's definitely going to be a very big tribe in the new set as well as Atlanteans and Dragons because we know that Mayday is the head of the Guild tribe and she seems to be pretty popular. We'll check her out in a second. We got Swashbuckler, which I love, is a twin strike, which doesn't really matter. It's a 1 1 unless you can pump it somehow. But Roar, it's just deal 1 damage. This actually can just go straight to your opponent's face if you want, or it can take out a creature. You can even ping your own creatures. Uh, or your own face sometimes, uh, if, depending on what deck you're running, uh, you, you can use this for anything. You can hit any target, so it's very versatile. Love this card. Ogre Archer is probably the best card in the Sanctum. I love this card. 5 mana, 3-3 three, three body, and it's a 3 damage spell, all combined into 1. Just a great tempo play. You take out your opponent's creature, you develop your own board. I mean, getting this from the Sanctum as a bonus card, definitely awesome. It is a bit on the expensive side at 20. There had never been in the previous Sanctum anything higher than 17, so now we're suddenly seeing here's 20 and 30 cost. Imperious Smite destroy the strongest creature for 4 mana. I've seen some people complaining that this might be too strong. However, it's 30 favor. You could actually get two other cards uh, like the average seems to be pretty much lower than 15 or about 15. So you could buy two cards or you can get one Imperious Smite. Either way, we'll see how that plays out. But this is definitely a strong removal spell. Uh, but again, 30 favor is no joke. Threats, we've got Enraged Alley has always been there. I believe this reduced by one. Jail Beast uh, has an afterlife, summon a 1-1 one, one Impling. That gives you two nethers for the price of one card. Uh, if you're playing another deck, definitely pertinent. Lambasting Wand has been in there, and it's the only card now with reach aside from the Swashbuckler. There used to be a Rune of Fire, which could go face. Not anymore. Uh, Lupine Elemental, 25 favor for a 5-mana 4-6. Creatures damaged by this creature get burn plus 1. 
it's not really an exciting card. It doesn't have uh, a tribe, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why this is in here. Um, maybe elementals will have some play at some point in the future, but I don't know about that. And then finally, the value deck. We've got a 10, the cheapest cost card in here. Uh, lootable Corpse Afterlife, draw a card. It's a 0-1. Basically, you play it. The following turn, you can swing with it and sack it. It's also an Anubian, which if you're playing an Anubian deck, definitely, definitely important. Uh, if you're playing some type of spell boost deck, which I believe the next set might have some stuff for that. You can get wide and then just give it spell boost. It's a free card. It kind of goes in with like the school teacher type decks uh, as well. Ambitious Adventure has been in there. Rune of Sight has been in there. And Trial Begins is very interesting. Choose a creature in your deck that matches your god's domain. Pull it to your hand and shuffle your deck. But it has to be in your domain. It can't be a neutral card. But we know that the new set is going to, they've hinted, uh, have more things that are domain specific and try and move away from all those overpowered neutral cards. And in fact, one of the cards I'm gonna show you in a second really requires you to run all of the same domain. And in doing so, uh, things like the trial begins become very good because that means every single card or every single creature, at least in your deck, becomes a target for the trial begins. So very interesting card to see here. And now let's check out the Tides of Fate. So there's now a new tab on godsunchained.com. There's some lore on here. There's an event coming up. We got a teaser trailer. Across these seas lie lands unknown. Fateful words told to us long ago before you were lost. Now I must tie my fate to thieves and rogues. Venture out beyond the waves to follow rumors of a city of white stone where industrious peoples craft marvelous inventions, tales of an island of fire, and dragon folk who live as one with the land. Old friend, Yukos is bigger than we ever imagined. But wherever you are, I will find you, for fate will lead me to your shores. Coming October 25th, so we have a date. Uh, we get to see some of the location some of the players here we saw Ico is still part of this uh, we saw Captain Mayday there we saw the new city of stone the island of fire where the dragons are we saw the Atlantean place let's check out some of the cards that they've highlighted so far so we have Blade of the Creator is super interesting to me. It's a 5 mana 0 5 relic. However, at the start of the game, if your deck contains only light cards, put this in your mulligan and set its mana cost to 0. Roar, set your god's max health to 99. Does not heal you for 99, it just sets the maximum health to 99. Now, I don't know why it is a relic. This is the part that confuses me, and obviously we'll find out as more cards are revealed. So far, only like less than 10 have been revealed. Um, why is it a relic and not a spell? It seems like this should be a spell, unless there's some way where you can maybe pump this relic. Uh, it does look like it's growing uh, in power here, and it does say it's uh, infused with the power of the first being. Uh, zero power for the first being is not very powerful. So will light suddenly have ways to pump relics? I don't know. Uh, We'll find out, but this is a very interesting card. We, then we have for nature, Zancidian Wave Ruler, which is a seven mana six six hidden dragon, and it has mana surge eight. Your god power becomes primal tide. Uh, now let's see, see what mana surge is, because this is the new keyword here. So mana surge is when you spend. A certain amount of mana in your turn. You can see this card down here at the bottom actually just is now glowing because it has mana surge eight. So he spent eight mana. The card is now surged permanently. And you can see summon two copies of this creature if you have mana surge eight. So since he spent eight mana on the first spell, then he used uh, the structure to refresh a bunch of mana. Uh, then now when he plays this, it's surged. So it's going to not only play the one creature. It actually does the whole Mana Surge event and summons two more copies. To be clear, it doesn't have to all happen on one turn. Once a, once a card is surged, it is surged forever. So you can see here, card is not surged, plays eight mana spell. Card is now surged. 
forever. He doesn't have to play it this turn. He happens to because he refreshes his mana with this cool new structure, uh, which we'll see here. Overload, refresh mana equal to this creature's health, destroy this creature. So there's a new structure in town that can actually help with these mana surge cards and get some serious power on the board. That's a six mana creature. A six mana creature that summons 12, 12 worth of stats over three bodies. So that's pretty nuts. So mana surge is the new keyword here. And we don't know what Primal Tide is yet. But it's a hidden dragon. Sign me up. And we've got Alborax, Soaring Flame, 8 mana, 12, 12 overkill dragon for war, which has roar, deal 4 damage. This is pretty strong. Uh, if you're holding a dragon, your god power becomes Breathe Fire. Don't know what Breathe Fire is, but sign me up. Love the dragons. Here's Captain Mayday here. Sorry, Admiral. She's been promoted or demoted. I don't know the difference between captains and admirals. All apologies to Admiral Mayday. It's a three mana roar, deal one damage. Repeat this for each time you have played an Admiral Mayday. It's a three mana one one. So on the surface, this card is terrible. It's a legendary card. Uh, you can only play it once, right? Obviously there's gonna be new cards in this set for guild for bouncing things back to your hand somehow, maybe. Uh, uh, cloning Admiral Mayday? I don't, I don't know. Um, it's a very interesting card. It seems very combo-y. I don't know how it works. Uh, other than she's obviously like the head of the pirates here, she can't just be a terrible 1-1 one -one that's impossible to play multiple times. So this seems like a really cool combo-y guild deception leader here. So excited for that. Four mana, five four. Francesca Surging Signal is a an Atlantean here. Roar, if you control four other Atlanteans, obliterate them and summon Project Rise. Again, we don't know what Project Rise is yet. It has to be really strong because you're obliterating four of your own creatures, which is not easy to get four creatures on board. Uh, maybe there'll be some uh, new Atlanteans that makes that easier, obviously. But uh, if you can get four Atlanteans on board, Project Rise. And finally, we have Death here, which has Tarkin Depths Caller, which is another dragon, seven mana, four, eight. At the end of your turn, trigger each friendly creature's afterlife twice. At the end of your turn, trigger each friendly creature's afterlife twice. This seems incredible because you can already have the afterlife creature on board and without it ever dying, you know, you can then play Tarkin and it's going to it's going to trigger it twice, which I don't I don't know what new afterlife's there will be from the new set, but I'm picturing things like Rock Drake eggs, um bomb flies, all kinds of there's a million things with afterlives that uh, are going to proc twice. That seems pretty crazy. And it's a dragon. Sign me up. Here we go. So the new set is going to heavily revolve around Draca and Sartonian. The Sartonians are the Atlanteans, or rather they pilot Atlanteans, I suppose. Uh, and Draca are people who ride on the backs of dragons. So there's going to be an event with this skirmish, and it seems to happen weekly. So it starts 27th, uh, 7th. 21st. So it happens like maybe bi-weekly or so. And it's going to be Dragons versus Atlanteans. And you already know what team I'm on. And if you want to be on the winning team with me, join the Dragons because uh, it helps shape the cards, which is pretty cool. So control the fate of the cards like never before. Skirmish results affect each faction's hero cards, the story, and are immortalized in the Tides of Fate card back. So this card back, actually, after each skirmish, the winning faction has their victory immortalized with a colored crystal. My goal is for every single uh, gem on this card to be red for dragons. I presume red. Um, but dragons are going to win every single skirmish. All right, so these cards are not finalized because they can change based on the, the skirmish results. But we can see the dragon is just a plain old 5 mana 5-5 five, five, roar draw two dragons, which... Is great on the surface. A five mana five five that draws two cards is insane. Uh, and then the Atlantean leader here, we got Zaskia Sentinel of Sartonia. Say that three times fast. We've got Roar, draw a mana surge card, mana surge six, mana surge a card in hand. That's a little bit hard to wrap my head around. 
if you've spent six mana and then play this on a following turn, that means this is going to be surged, and you can now mana surge another card in hand, just any card, even like a mana surge nine. Uh, that seems pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but that seems nuts already. Now, based on the results of the skirmishes, these actually will change a little bit, so we'll have to see what the final results are of these two cards, uh, but I'm pretty excited to see how that all works out. I like the idea of the storyline event. I love the card back that's going to change over time. So join me on the dragon team and we'll get a bunch of red gems in here. It'll look beautiful. Stay tuned for more content on Tides of Fate coming up soon.